Welcome, everybody. My name is Scott Conklin. I'm the director of admissions at Episcopal High School, and I'm here with our performing arts teachers and some of our students who are uh, in our performing arts classes. So we're excited to talk to you about some of the opportunities available at Episcopal High School. And with that, I'm going to kick it over to uh, our teachers and students to introduce themselves. And I forgot who I was asking to go first. I'll go first, I think. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Conklin. Yeah, so we'll take an opportunity just to sort of introduce who we are and, and what we do here at the school. Uh, my name is Mr. Erstad, and my main duty here at the school is the choir director. Um, I have the privilege of working with the choirs and all of their various iterations, which I'll talk a bit more in a little bit. Uh, but even outside of the choir, um, I work heavily in the chapel program, helping to coordinate all of the music and student performances that happen in our chapel services. Uh, I also work with the uh, the musical that typically happens in the winter each year. Um, I work on McGuire uh, Dormitory, uh, doing dorm duty there. And uh, what else do I do? I teach music theory. Uh, depending on the semester, I teach two sections of music theory and sometimes a bit in the theology department as well. I have a really cool class that sort of ties music and theology together, uh, which I'm actually just getting ready to teach uh, this spring. Uh, so that's uh, sort of my my bag of duties here at Episcopal. Hi, my name is Adrian Taylor, and I have been at Episcopal for a little more than a year. I teach the dance classes here. I teach two classes, Survey of Dance, which is a general dance class. It has um, beginner to intermediate and advanced students. I also teach a class called um, Movement for the Athlete. I lost my mind for a moment, couldn't remember what it was called. Um, and that is truly what it sounds like. We um, have athletes in the class and we make sure that they know how to use their body and that they're very familiar with their body as it um, makes sense to their sport. I also do an afternoon option, which is a dance class, which meets every day. It's probably the neatest class I teach because I do get to see the kids every day. Um, and we, again, have beginners, but we also have advanced students. Um, and then depending on where the, the year falls, we also have um, a connection to the musical, which is always fun. I um, also am on the Dal dorm team, which has been really nice. And I also um, help with activities and I am a uh, advisor with Young Republicans. Hi, my name is Mallory Nonamaker. This is my first year at Episcopal High School. I am the director of theater, and I also teach in the English department. Within the theater, I teach sections of act acting, and then I also teach a digital video class. I co-teach that with Ms. Pinkowski. I also run the theater afternoon option where we work on a fall play and a musical, and I'll speak more about that in a bit. In the English department, I teach both American drama and playwriting and I serve on the Hoxton dorm team. Hi, my name is Wes Reed. I'm the technical director for the theater department and uh, for the arts center. I maintain the uh, Pendleton stage theater and the black box theater and I also uh, work with the students for afternoon options for our afternoon plays. Um, <clears throat> those are my main duties, but I also do the audio for chapel and audio for online. I'm sorry, not online. Well, online, but also, <laughs> uh, uh, on campus events. Um, and I've been here for five years. This is my fifth year. I think same as Brent. I don't remember. We all came in at the same time. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I think it's you, Lucy. So my name is Lucy Peacock. Um, I'm from Newburgh, North Carolina. I'm a senior this year at Abyssal. Um, I live on Dalrymple Dorm. Um, so I participate in the dance program at Abyssal. And in addition to dance, I play tennis and participate in um, on the honor committee. And I am a monitor. Hi, my name is Chris. I am a senior out of his school as well, and I'm from Queens, New York. Uh, in terms of performing arts, I play viola for orchestra, and I also do a bit of acting um, with the afternoon theater group. And some other things I'm involved in are the honor committee, which uh, Lucy is also a part of, 
and the vestry, which she's also a part of. And I'm on a I'm a monitor on Berkeley dorm. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Carter. I am the chair of the arts department, and I specifically teach um, instrumental music and audio engineering. And when I'm not hanging out in the arts building, I am the dorm head at Berkeley, uh, Berkeley Dormitory. And then um, I'm also the faculty advisor to the discipline committee. So uh, we all kind of wear a lot of hats around here um, and uh, we're gonna kind of get into what we do specifically in the arts world here though. Um, so just as an overview of what we do, um, we do a lot of the same things that you'll find in many, many, many places. Um, you know, we're, we're uh, focused on visual arts, performing arts, digital arts. Um, there's another uh, presentation panel uh, from the visual artists that um, you can check out. But today we're gonna talk specifically about performing arts. So uh, obviously you've heard we have choral music and instrumental music. Uh, we have a full functioning theater department and technical theater um, and dance, which um, dance department and theater uh, perform all year round as do the choirs and the um, orchestra, strings, winds, percussion. Um, and frankly, we have a lot of different uh, students who come from a variety of backgrounds and a variety of places. So we welcome all levels and we just kind of work with you wherever you are when you get here. Uh, we try to match up uh, small groupings within the ensembles, uh, dance, theater, and music to make sure that you, you are paired with people that you can learn from and with, um, but we also incorporate you into the overall large ensemble. So whether you're a beginner or you're an advanced student, we have a place for you and we can help to differentiate the instruction to make sure that you, no matter where you are in your journey, um, can grow from this. Um, our programs are, are definitely academic and performing. Uh, we do a lot of background in history and uh, in the theory of, of what we do in our particular mediums, but we also apply all of those things to our art forms. And we do a lot of cross-curricular and co-curricular type of, of activities. We work together a lot in this building from the performing arts standpoint. Um, everything from, you know, as you were hearing just a minute ago, the musical where you have theater and dance and music all placed together, um, but that might also incorporate some things from the visual artists and it definitely incorporates the technical theater and sometimes even audio engineering gets involved in, in some of that. So we're, we're certainly uh, well versed in helping each other out in this building, but we also work with other classes and other departments to bring a really cross-curricular um, experience to students while they're here. Um, in the arts building, um, you'll find classrooms for ensembles and dance and theater. You'll also find visual arts uh, here with everything from a photo lab um, to the uh, painting studio, the drawing studio, ceramic studio, and, um, and then our main art gallery, which uh, we feature uh, student work, professionals work, um, everything from uh, our own teacher's work. It just kind of depends on the time of year and what has been programmed for that space. And then finally, um, you know, we do a, a lot of different styles of performing here. You'll find everything from chapel performances. Uh, this year, we've had a lot of online performances, as you can imagine, but we have main stage productions. We have full concerts. We have chamber concerts. We have dance productions that end up in the stadium sometimes or online that gets sent out in a video feed. Um, we find a lot of different ways to uh, feature our students and our artistry in this building um, throughout the year so that not only can we experience those, but the community and our community at large can experience them um, as we move through the year. I think we're going to take a look now at uh, some of the more specific areas of the performing arts. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Erstead for just a minute uh, as we get into music here. Thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, so whenever I talk about the choirs, I love to talk about it as a bit of a choose your own adventure, or maybe a structured choose your own adventure, uh, in that we have all different backgrounds, all types of people in the choir, some who are brand new, you know, just joining for their first semester. Uh, as a high school student and other folks who have been singing their entire lives. 
Um, and all those people sort of get thrown into the same classroom together and are asked to, to work collaboratively in order to sort of achieve something great. And, and even though it's really unique in terms of a learning experience, um, I tend to think it's one of the things that makes choir really cool uh, is that we just we collaborate with one another in very different ways. Um, the choirs at Episcopal also sort of have the unique luxury of um, living in the arts department, you know, and, and all of the collaboration that comes uh, with our, our dancers and our visual and graphic artists and our theater folks and the instrumental program. Um, but we also exist in the chapel. And so we have lots of collaboration. Uh, we hold our rehearsals in the chapel. Um, we usually sing in the chapel, either for chapel services or special events. Um, so we have sort of both of these places that we're drawing from and lots of sort of cross interaction with, with all of that. Um, in terms of ensembles, um, all students who enter the choirs at Episcopal sort of are automatically grouped into what we call the concert choir. Uh, and from there, you have lots of opportunity to break out. Um, we have a group called the Chamber Choir, which is uh, a little more highly auditioned, typically is reserved for upper class students, but that's not always the case. If someone comes in with sort of really strong background in singing, um, they absolutely have the opportunity to audition for the Chamber Ensemble. And then we have a lot of more informal ways of singing too, things like the a cappella groups, um, which are largely student run. Uh, they set their own rehearsal times, choose their own music, uh, and, and rely heavily on student leadership to sort of run their rehearsals and find their performances and all that. Uh, so across the board, uh, the choral program is, is diverse, it's uh, active and bustling and uh, provides lots of opportunities uh, for you to find your voice, uh, regardless of what your background is or what, uh, what your goals are ultimately uh, in, in learning uh, to be a singer. I'd also mention that we have opportunities for taking private voice lessons, um, which is a pretty popular, usually at some point in the choral program, someone will decide to, to take advantage of that. We have a fabulous voice teacher uh, named Miss Hollinshead, uh, who's really one of the better respected teachers here in Washington, DC, and we're, we're really blessed to have her at Episcopal. Um, so I think that sums up the choral program in a nutshell, um, and I'll toss it over to audio engineering. Okay, so I, I do teach audio engineering, and we have four levels of audio engineering, uh, one, two, honors, and advanced. And uh, we are very privileged here at Episcopal to not only have an audio engineering lab where we can start um, students out on on everything from uh, MIDI and virtual instruments and get into uh, basic mixing of, of tracks and songs, all the way up to having a fully functional, large um, recording studio in our building that um, we keep very up to date and allows for us to uh, do a variety of types of recording and then mixing in the larger space in that room um, as well. The, the classes themselves start out more of a uh, 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 loops and samples type of, uh, of a class, but you can really kind of dive into the things that you might be interested in. I will say that I have a, um, a balance of people who come in who do read music and who already perform and those who don't, but just really have an interest in it. Uh, we, we are able to fuse that together and make it um, very, uh, uh, informational and and uh, a good experience for everyone uh, who's in the class. And it tends to be a really, really fun class and um, kind of a place that people lose themselves to, uh, you know, they come over, they start to work and they forget that they're here for three or four hours sometimes because they love it so much. Um, I'll also, uh, before I go into the ensembles, let me also mention that we do offer um, a guitar class here, uh, guitar one and two which um, is an it's it's an ensemble type of class in the fact that the classroom is set up with probably around 10 students in it. And they do uh, some performances throughout the year, uh, mostly towards the end of the semesters, but that is an option for students as well as uh, guitar and piano private lessons uh, for those students who come in and already play or want to learn. Uh, you can pick up a private lesson if you don't have uh, space in your in your regular schedule to be able to fit uh, the guitar class. And then obviously we have uh, ensembles. We split our ensembles into three different areas for instrumental music. Uh, there is a woodwinds and brass class, which a lot of people would consider band. 
Um, but we don't actually have the percussion in that class. We split our percussion out to its own class. Currently, uh, we have 14 percussionists in that percussion ensemble. Um, we do support the woodwinds and brass and the strings when they need uh, percussion parts added to them. Uh, and then, of course, we do have the string program that is more of a um, string chamber group. However, um, we put all three groups together to do some full orchestra, and we have even done uh, full orchestra and voices um, in the past, which is actually a lot of fun to do uh, when we can have all of the musicians on stage uh, performing at one time. It's, it's a really, really neat experience. And then finally, uh, intro to music theory goes back to Mr. Erstad, if you would like to say anything about that. Sure. Um, so, so depending on the year, we oftentimes uh, run a music theory track. Um, so typically in the first semester, we have an intro to music theory class, which is really geared toward um, beginners to music theory, um, folks who are sort of just entering this work um, and looking to pick up some sort of rudimentary skills and basic note reading and composition. Um, and then that sort of leads into the second semester, which is an advanced music theory class, uh, which prepares a student for uh, taking the AP music theory exam. Let me also add one more thing uh, before I forget that there, there are private lessons for all instruments here. Um, people who are in the instrumental music ensembles all take uh, lessons. So just be aware that those are available and um, you are welcome to take them. Now I think we're gonna move over to theater. All right, um, so the theater program takes place mainly in the afternoon options. That's where we will mount the full scale productions. There's usually a fall one act play um, where in a typical year that is not a COVID year would be taken to the Virginia Theater, theater Festival. And then a winter musical, which usually takes place in February or March, and then a smaller spring play in the black box. The other two productions, I believe, usually take place in Pendleton. Is that correct, Chris? Yes. Um, as well, um, this year, playwriting is a class that I will be teaching, and the, the sort of culminating part of that class will be a small play festival, which will be an interaction with so I'm excited to see um, students' words performed on the stage. In the theater curriculum, we have acting one and two, and also opportunities available for students who might want to have individual coaching or special classes are also available. Thank you, Ed. Dance up next. Hello. So, uh, the dance program, I am so excited about. Um, I, I feel just in the year that I've been here, we've really kind of made some strides, which I'm super excited about. But the survey of dance class, as I mentioned earlier, um, much like the choir department, we kind of put everybody together. And that sounds kind of crazy, but we really find ways to help and support each other. So you may have someone who is very advanced, but you have someone who is maybe new to dance. Um, and they have an opportunity to learn from that more advanced student. And I'm always a believer that you can always learn from someone. I myself love taking a beginning ballet class because I just remember all the things that I'm supposed to do. So sometimes having the basics kind of come back to you is very, very helpful. Um, but with that class, um, we do jazz, we do ballet, um, we do modern, we have the um, luxury of, again, being in this amazing area um, and that we're, uh, it's easy for people to come to us. So we've really taken advantage of some master classes in the last uh, year and a half um, and brought uh, folks in from um, work from Broadway. Um, we had a young lady from the Dance Theater of Harlem. Um, we've had a uh, Two Tony Award winner, uh, two Tony Award winners come and teach class and be a part of our program. Um, so we really just kind of do really kind of fun and different things. Um, as Mark alluded to, we danced at halftime at a basketball game last year. That was something that hadn't been done before, but we thought, hey, might as well try. Um, and it was a huge success. It was something a little bit different from everybody um, that we've done before. But that's the beauty of the class is that we are able to kind of try different things. And depending on who is in the class, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that's part of the journey as well. Um, with movement for the athlete, such a neat class. Um, I I love that I, I get to see growth. I don't see the growth quite as much with the survey of dance, just because they know what they're getting into with the dance class. But um, in most cases, I have 
um, boys. I have I have had uh, a couple of roles in the class, but they come in and they think that they're going to be wearing tutus by the end of the semester. But what happens is that they find out that they are far more flexible than they thought they were or that they had control over different muscles. Um, we go over um, a little bit of some kinesiology and um, and we really learn just how our body works, why it works. When this muscle hurts, this is probably what I did. But if I do this, I can let it heal and I can still kind of push forward with my sport. Um, we learn why this particular motion um, causes us to move um, and just really learning the body and learning um, why my primiformis is my primiformis. And if I sit uh, crisscross applesauce, that may not be a good thing for long-term use. So it, it sounds silly, but when you know that you're kind of doing something to your body every day, it's really helpful to figure that out. Um, so that's been a, a, a blessing. I, I, I love to see and hear when I have students come back to me later and say, hey, this hurts. And they not only know where it is, they know what it is. They know the action and the movement and where the nerve is. And it, that's just, it's just wonderful. Um, both classes, I will say, um, did not start the way I thought they did, which I think is always fun. Um, you, you have an idea and then as you go along, it turns into something else, which is really very nice. But one thing I think I can say for all of the arts is uh, that particular, both of those classes, and I think probably some of the other classes, it's a time that you can kind of turn off that one side of your brain and let the other side of your brain turn on. And it's a real respite. Um, I know during this COVID season, um, it was nice to be able to move for our, our class block. And then we didn't have to, I mean, we did still look at each other in our boxes on our computer, but we got to move. We weren't sitting in a chair um, and we just got to be a little bit more active. Um, we still do have some structure in class, but it was just nice to kind of take a layer off and just be a little more free, which is the beauty of the arts is that you, your soul gets to open up a little bit. I love it. So many amazing opportunities uh, in the performing arts for, for our students. And, and clearly you can see the passion of our, our teachers. Um, we're going to throw some questions out there um, for both the students and the teachers and we we'll just kind of chime in whoever's ready to talk. Um, but we'll start with Lucy and Chris. Um, what do you love about the arts at, at Episcopal? Um, you know, what opportunities have you had and, and what is, you know, what have some of those really good moments been for you? I guess I could start off. Um, well, personally, for me, coming into uh, orchestra and like the instrumental strings ensemble, a lot of it in my head was. Um, just playing the notes and just getting the rhythms right and just making sure that everything from a technical aspect was really like perfect. Um, but I think that through the class and through the help of um, Mr. Carter and Mr. Erstad, I learned to really more feel the music and to be able to express myself through those. And that's sort of like, that not only applies in um, the performing arts sense, it also helps to like you can apply it to your everyday actions and like really feel the emotions that you're feeling. And then like in terms of theater, like it doesn't really seem like theater would help with um, like instrumental music, but a lot of it is like so much of a performance and like you are doing certain actions to really make sure that you're emphasizing like one musical note or like a crescendo and just like having that intersectionality through so many various aspects of the performing arts between the academic sense um, and of course, like just outside of the classroom. And I think that's like really neat. Yeah, so I think Chris kind of covered up everything but dance. So um, uh, so yeah, I've been involved with the Episcopal Dance Program for four years. And I think it really has been an amazing thing for me because we've really grown a lot in the past four years. And I think, just having the opportunity to have this group that we otherwise might not like have without the dance class. I participate in the day class and we've just, we're all 10 of us. We're all completely different people with completely different grade levels, um, experience levels. And we just come together and we're this like really tight knit group. And so I think that being able to have each other and then also to be able to have the opportunity to take master classes and perform in front of our peers has been really awesome for me because we are just able to learn a lot more 
like on the weekends, since we live on campus, we're able to actually have that extra time to meet with a teacher on the weekend or that kind of thing. So, yeah, I'd say, like Chris said, there's definitely an opportunity to connect dance to theater and theater to music. I think that that's really cool, too. Good stuff. Um, all right, we got one for the teachers and, and you don't all have to answer this, um, but what do you love about teaching uh, in the performing arts at Episcopal High School? And and the second part of that question would be, how does being in a, an all boarding environment help you teach and work with the, the students? Are, are there advantages uh, to being in an all boarding school um, in some of the work that you do? Um. I'll chime in really quickly, sort of as the new person, I would say that the collaboration in this department is unlike anything I've experienced in my professional career or even, you know, in undergraduate work. You know, we were we had first curious incident of dog in the night, which was our fall play this year. I was work, I was trying to find sound effects and I was able to turn to Mark and an audio engineering student was able to put together some sound effects for us we were able to record some audio effects in the recording studio and preparing for the musical this year just already i feel this sense of we really are a team and willing to work and help with help each other out and that just means that the students are going to have an even stronger educational experience because we're all supporting each other there's no sense of um sort of competition i think that and it can occur other places and so there's just really this sense of we're all here to help and support each other. And I see that in the students, reflected in the students and the way they come out to support the different areas of the arts. Any other takers on that question? We can go to the next one. I'll jump in for one about being on a boarding school though, why that's really kind of cool. Um, there's a couple of reasons. One is I, I actually think I see the other faculty more just because we're always here where i mean this this building is always in motion in some way or shape or form and we do a lot of our best work in these small creative spurts like in the office or walking down the hall or i walk into a room and i'm like wow that looks really cool let's think about what we can do with that uh you know that i, I know that happens in other places but that doesn't happen in other places at like 10 o'clock at night when maybe some of us are here and we're just having those those times and then the same thing with the students though, because you're always around students and they're always around you. First of all, there's a lot of barriers I think that are broken because they know, I mean, there are, uh, in many ways, there are no secrets on, on a campus because you all know each other so well and they know our families and we know them and we get to know their families. But the thing that that kind of helps with is really knowing each student as an individual and what they need, not just from a music standpoint or from a teaching standpoint, but you know how how do they really take this type of praise? How, how can I really help them? I know that they're having a hard night on dorm, so tomorrow may I need to back off just a little bit to help them get through the day. Those are things you don't get, and I taught public school for ten years. You don't get that in a public school setting because it, I mean, they come, they go, but here everybody is around each other constantly. And it's just an amazing, um, an amazing ability to really work on a, on a micro level with each and every student. It's, it's amazing. So true. Um, thanks, Mark. Uh, question for the kids. Um, can you talk a little bit about the facilities and, and Ainsley Art Center and, um, you know, how available it is to, to you know, what you're doing uh, in the performing arts. Yeah, I'll jump in here. Um, so for dance, we have one dance studio, which I guess when you think about it, we really have three because we have the stage, Pendleton stage, we have the black box, and then we have our actual studio. And if you want to count the chapel, there's four. And if you want to count the basketball court, there's five. So, I mean, we really kind of use all around campus. We actually, because of COVID, when we weren't able to be inside, we danced on the track. So I think that's one thing that's really cool about our campus is we can kind of take our groups and put them anywhere. And although we do have our dance studio that we have class in and we practice in, 
we can ultimately take what we do inside that classroom and put it somewhere else, which I think is super cool about our campus. And I would say I'll let Chris talk about the other facilities. Yeah, I think when I first came on the physicals campus, like the thing that immediately stood out to me was like the state of the art recording studio. And I was just like in awe of everything that it could do. And now that I'm a senior and I have like friends who have access to the facility, that element of collaboration that we talked about earlier really comes into play where like sometimes because like it might be open on the weekends and we just hop over and we just like record a song really quickly or maybe just jump into one of the practice rooms that we have that are usually open like 24 seven. And so just having that space. And like, I think what Lucy said was like very true in the sense that we really can be anywhere. And I think our adaptability really showed through uh, this COVID season. Thanks, Kim and Lucy. Um, all right, question for the teachers and uh, Lucy and, and Chris can chime in as well, but um, are there any examples of, of how specific examples you, you, some of you have already touched on um, our, our proximity to D.C. and, and how that uh, helps support our, our programming? But any specific examples that you can cite of, of when you've used um, the resources of D.C., either on campus or getting off campus for, for any of our performing arts opportunities? I would say um, one of the things that I love about this particular arts faculty is so many of us are doing work in DC as well. You know, we're connected with, uh, you know, different organizations, our organizations throughout the city. And we really thrive on bringing those resources to our classroom here at Episcopal as well. Um, I'll speak for myself. I also happen to work at a church right across from the White House and we have great opportunities to take kids down there. Uh, usually around Christmas time, and we put on a great concert right on Lafayette Square, and uh, it ends up being just this really remarkable day of sort of singing and caroling around D.C. and taking advantage of some of the historic buildings in that area, and uh, it's it's really fun. And, of course, the Kennedy Center is, is right up the river as well, and we always have great interaction with that uh, facility. Um, I happen to know that one of the most famous singers in the world, Renee Fleming, is just moving to Old Town just up the street. Uh, in the coming weeks. So we just have remarkable access uh, to to artists, to uh, organizations who are doing great work throughout the DC area. And I'll tag on to the uh, Kennedy Center. Not only do we go to the Kennedy Center, but we bring part of the Kennedy Center here to us uh, four times a year with the National Chamber Players, which is the chamber group from the National Symphony Orchestra. They, they are in residence with us uh, four times a year. And uh, we do obviously a lot of work with them. They, they perform here and um, our students uh, sometimes have access with them to be able to ask questions or, or pre-concert uh, uh, type of question answer. Uh, it's a really, really neat uh, series to offer uh, here on campus for not just the uh, music students, but the entire community uh, as a whole. And then the other uh, side of, of using DC is that we have a lot of access to the military ensembles, which is, uh, frankly, they are some of the best musicians in the world. And you aren't going to find that anywhere else. When I used to live in Florida and the Marine Band was coming to, to uh, Orlando, people would you know, they would sell out of tickets or, or you couldn't get tickets anymore. And um, it was like a big, big event for the instrumental music teachers there. Here, I have Marine Band uh, members who actually come here and teach privately. So it's we have this incredible access uh, to that particular portion of D.C., which um, is just equal to nothing else that you can find in the world. Yeah, and I'll say one more thing really fast. Um, we actually... There's a local dance festival, the festival that we've been able to participate in twice um, since my time in Episcopal. And I think we were supposed to do it again this year, but we had COVID, so we couldn't do it. But um, it's actually really cool. We're able to kind of work with teachers in D.C. and teachers from other schools to teach us classes. And they're not normal dance classes. They're not ballet, jazz. It's all sorts of styles of dance that are kind of out in the real world. And so I think that that opportunity to learn from our peers, teachers, is kind of cool as well. All right, I've got one last quick question for, for Chris and Lucy. Um, and then Mark or uh, any of the teachers, if you have any kind of 
closing comments before we wrap it up. Um, but Chris and Lucy, any advice that you would give to a, a prospective student who's watching this, um, who's thinking about coming to Episcopal and, and being a part of uh, any of the opportunities in performing arts? I think if I were to sum it up in one sentence, it's don't be shy. Um, so much of the stuff we do here, you really need to be fully invested. And if you're not, then you're going to be sucked in it anyways, just because the people around you are so invested in it. And it's not like our community is one that's going to be like, oh, like you hear the mess up in chapel. Like we're all really supportive of one another and it really encourages us to do our best work. Yeah, that's actually sort of what I was going to say. I was going to say, don't be scared to try something new. Um, we have so many dancers and I know musicians and athletes even that come into a pistol and have never put on a pair of ballet shoes, never put on tights before, and they try it one time and they fall in love with our crazy group. And it's kind of fun because we all grow together. All right, we're almost out of time, but any last comments from many of the teachers? Mr. Carter? Anybody else before I, I'll close out? I just wanna say, first of all, um, we want you to come and be part of what we do. It is an amazing experience as part of your Episcopal experience. We are here to help you grow. We are here to grow with you because most of us learn right alongside of you. And I agree with what Lucy and Chris said. It doesn't matter who you are or what you come in thinking that you already do well. It doesn't matter if you're an academic, if you're already an artist, or you're, you, you consider yourself a, an athlete you can find a home right here in Ainsley as well. And we, we have that crossover all of the time. So don't be afraid of what someone else might say about you or what, what's being said around you. There's probably nothing being said around you other than applause and congratulations and great job. So when you're here, come find us, come find something that you love here and let us uh, help you to get, to, you know, to grow in that and to be part of that with you. And we hope to see you here in the fall. Well, great. Well, well thanks um, to our, our teachers and, and Lucy and, and Chris for um, joining us and, and sharing more about all of the uh, amazing thing that we're, uh, things that we're doing in the performing arts. For the prospective students out there, um, I can't think of a better place to, to learn and, and to grow uh, as an artist with all of the resources that we have. And we're excited for the next steps in the application process. If you do have any questions, uh, that didn't get answered today, uh, feel free to reach out to any one of us um, and we'd be happy to get those answered. Um, those, thanks everybody for, for joining us today.